Okay. Enjoy the class, Mr. Hitter. I will give it to you over to you now. Uh, I just want to thank Mrs. Van der Merwe for her for all the for everything she's doing for the for all you students. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm Mr. I'm Johan Herter. I'm a computer practice lecturer at George Campus. I hope you can all hear me. So today we're going to start with the letter head. I'm going to start with question five of the external exam of November 2019. I hope you ha all have it open in front of you on page 11. Now, before I start with this, I just want to mention that the external exam and the internal exam is going to be 200 marks. 50 marks will be... Uh, theory, the remaining 150 marks will be the word part. You'll see that in there's also an Excel part. Please ignore that. So the question paper will always include the Excel, but you only choose between Word and Excel. Uh, so please do the word part. And then I also want to mention that you only need 80 marks out of 200 to pass. So if you look at the mark allocation for question five and six, it's already about 90 marks. So um, I don't, yeah, I, I'm just saying that uh, we don't want to go for 80 marks out of 200, but at least if you do these two questions properly, then you can pass. So to get back to the question paper, let's quickly have question five open. Do you all have question five open before I continue? Okay, I'm not hearing anything, but I'm just carrying on. Um, it says here, create a letterhead for the Coavuleza Fiber Optics Services for Invoices and Quotations. Now, people, they love asking a letterhead. Now, the thing that you have to keep in mind, you first do the letterhead, then you save and print it, and then your mail merge, you're going to use the letterhead in your mail merge. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's actually straightforward. Just keep in mind that your letterhead should be as small as possible and that your letterhead normally includes two to three columns, but below your letterhead, it must be one column. If we look at our screen at the moment, I've activated here my ruler, which is basically one column. Okay. If you don't have your ruler in front of you or open, you can go to view and then you can activate or deactivate your ruler here. So if you click on it, it's deactivated. Now it's activated. Okay, it's just a, a nice feature to use to help you to see if you are using three columns or so. If you go, I also love using my paragraph marker here because this also helps me to see uh, extra enters and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to start with this. Instruction one for question five says, open a new document i've done that number two says the font use arial size 12. so i'm going to change my font here to arial size 12. now before i continue with anything under my paragraph section click on the little arrow here and make sure that your spacing before is set to zero after is set to zero as well and that your line spacing is set to single. Now, people, this is very important because if you don't do this, then your letter rate becomes a bit bigger. And when you type your letter, it goes over two pages. We don't want that. So before you start with any document, please change your spacing before to zero and after to zero and your line spacing to single. That's very, very important because every question has a line spacing included. Uh, the next instruction here says all the margins must be 1.27. So the computers on campus uses centimeters. And also another thing, it says 1.27. We don't use comma, we use dots. So remember, if you go to layout, margins, can you see everything here are dots? Now 1.27 for the margins, we're going to select narrow here because all the margins are set to 1.27. It's just a quicker way 
to do this, okay? Instruction 4 says, insert your examination number, computer number, and question number as indicated. So you'll see that the way they do this in N6 is a bit different than in 5. In N5, they specifically tell you that you must add your name on the left and your question number on the right or vice versa. In this, they don't. Before question 5, page 10, they'd normally tell you there, if your name must be on the left and your question number on the right. Most of the time, they ask your examination number on the left and your question number on the right. So I'm just going to go insert, header. I'm going to select the first one here. And here I'm going to type in my examination number or uh, for the internal might be your name and surname. So I'm just going to type in anything here. I'm going to press tab to jump to the middle and I'm going to press tab to jump to the right. If I now go and I need to type in here question 5. Eh? I just want to show you this. I remember I've changed my margins to 1.27 but take a look what happened here. My little right tab stop didn't move so I need to manually go and move this to the right. Okay, Just keep that in mind. The reason why this happens is because of your margins. So if you don't change this, you might lose a mark because question five is there, not on the right. So just keep that in mind. Okay, students, sorry. It looks like some of you can't see the screen. Is that correct? You can hear the audio, but you can't see the screen. Just click on... No, not that one. Let me just quickly have a look. I'm just going to reshare my screen. Can you all see me now? Okay, so people, just to recap, I've just added my little header here, and then on the right hand side i've added question five as you can see i press tab tab and i just moved my little tab stop to the right uh, it was like that before so i just moved it to the right um, remember if you forget to move this and you leave it like this you might lose a mark depending on the external marker because this is not really right aligned so just keep that in mind i'm just giving you a couple of tips that will help you along the way. Okay, so we've done number one up to number four. Number five says insert a single horizontal line from half a point from the left to the right hand margin at the top of the page. So the way I show this, I go to home, then I go to my little borders here, click on the little arrow, and then I'm going to select your horizontal line. It just gives me a, a nice little line. Uh, it's the easiest way. This is what we call a single horizontal line. There's another method as well, but I prefer this one. Then that instruction 6 tells me, leave two line spaces after the line and create three columns. Column 1 is 5 centimeters, column 2 is 7 centimeters, and column 3 again is 5 centimeters. Now people, as in anything, in like in Word, there's multiple ways how you can do your columns. But at the end of the day, we want three columns, and then below the columns, we want one column again. That's the main thing that you have to keep in mind. Also, two line spaces actually refers to leaving a line open. I have my line open there. Remember, a line space is basically an enter. It's not a line. Don't get confused between the two. Okay, uh, 7.1.1, they tell me here uh, what must go into column 1, what must go into column 2, and then on page 12, they tell me what must go into column 3. So what I'm going to do, I'm quickly going to first type everything, and then I'm going to press enter a couple times, and then I'm going to highlight what I want to change to three columns, and then I'm going to change that to three columns. Uh, again, some people prefer to first switch to three columns. I do that last. Let me just quickly type this in. So 7.1.1 says in column one, I'm going to type in here 
join the fastest growing fiber network. Okay. Um, don't worry now about the fonts and all of that. I'm going to change that later. I just want to change all of this to lowercase again. Just keep in mind that it should be lowercase. Uh, then they want me to add here in column two a shadow a shadow word art. So I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to include here my word art. Can you see the word art is there? If you hover over it, it's going to give you a name. They want, oh, insert any shadow word art. So I can actually choose any one here. Let me just choose, doesn't matter which one. Uh, let's choose that one. And then here, I'm going to type in the name of the company. Okay, the font, they want the font to be Arial, size 30. They want it to be bold. They want it to be black, eh? So I've already changed, it's already black. Then they want to fit the width out to the width of the column centers. So I'm going to, it is already centered, but I'm going to change this later. You'll see. Uh, then key in the following below the word art centers. So I'm just going to go here. Let me just press enter here. I'm just going to move this. I'm going to press enter here a couple times. I'm just going to move this back here. There we go. Don't worry, we'll fix the formatting later. Um, then they want here fiber services they want to leave a line open they want it to be unshaped and also uncapped okay? there we go then on the next page um, are we going to come back to page 11 on page 12 they tell me to retrieve the picture saved as fiber optics graphics now most of the time to add a picture we're going to go to insert picture right if you go to insert picture and you go to your exam drive where the files are supposed to be located. So I'm just going to go to where the files. Can you see there's no picture here? If you get this, don't panic. The, sometimes they will give you a Word document with the picture in there. So then all you do, if the picture is not here, we're just going to open our um, explorer. Go to where the files are located. And you see that here we've got a fiber optics graphics word document if you open that document they have the picture here inside okay so i'm just going to click on the picture i'm going to go to copy i can actually close this document again and i can go and i can paste my document okay so just keep in mind the normal route to add a picture is to go to insert picture but in some cases, if the picture is not there, it's, in, it's been saved as a Word document. Then you must just open it that way. Okay, uh, I'm going to bother later on. I'm going to worry about the rest of this. I mean, the, um, the size and everything. Then they want me to leave two line spaces. Two line spaces, again, is a line open. And then they want me to add the rest of the text. So these little little icons uh, or um, symbols we can go to insert we can go to symbol and then we're going to go to more symbols under more symbols we're going to change the font to wingdings now people they love using the font wingdings and then you can go and select your little phone and you can insert it i'm just going to go enter i'm going to add my little folder here with a little letter and I'm also going to add my little mouse there we go okay so I'm just going to go here space type in 0800 space 000 space 555 and here I'm just going to make a space again info at awuleza fiber.com and then the next one here is www.kawulezafiber.com. Okay, so before I carry on, 
let me just quickly go back to page 11 instruction 7.1.1 so let me just change the font here uh, the first one that's in paragraph one i'm going to change the font to so i'm going to highlight i'm going to change my font here to bradley hand br there we go bradley hand they want it to be size 22 and they want this to be aligned to the left it must be bold and it must be over five lines so it's one two three four five just keep in mind what i did previously i highlighted and i changed this to lowercase eh? so if that's if you don't do that it will stay uppercase and then you're going to lose a mark for that okay so i've done that i've done this we'll fix this one later again and then fiber optic services they want this to be aerial size 14 they want it to be bold they want it to be centered then unshaped uncapped they want that to be aerial size 10 and also centered right eh? there we go then column three they i have my picture here they tell me that the picture should be right aligned so i'm just going to right align it they want me to change the size of the picture to 2.54 centimeters in height and 2.54 centimeters in width now people if i click on the picture i get a format ribbon here and then on the right hand side here i do see my little the values i change if i click on this can you see if i click on the one it changes the other one as well now the problem with this if i change this one that, then that one changes so what i need to do here click on your little arrow and then the lock aspect ratio remove that and then you can manually go and type in there 2.54 as your height and 2.54 as your width and then you click on okay it will adjust my picture then they tell me to apply the picture style drop shadow rectangle so here's my little my picture styles under format eh? and i'm just going to hover over it until i get the one that they want can you see it's that one drop shadow rectangle there we go and then they also tell me to insert a single line picture border of a quarter points so i can go to picture border i can just select here black and then I can go to my weight and I select here a quarter, which is that one. Eh? Let me just see if it works. Yeah, quarter. There we go. Okay. Uh, they don't specify here about, they just say a single line. So remember, under your dashes, you can also change the format of your border lines. Okay. There we go. Then they want me to leave two line spaces, which is basically a line, uh, an open row. And then they want me to add this. And they want all of this to be aligned to the right. And they want this to be size 10. And that's basically it. Okay. So once I've done this, I now need to switch this into three columns. So people, very, very, very important. Before you do anything, I'm going to go here. I'm going to enter a couple of times. Okay. Then I'm going to highlight the work. Remember, this is column one. That's column two. That's column three. Can you see I do not highlight that? Very important. Because this will become three columns. That will stay one column. And we're going to type our letter afterwards. Okay. So you highlight your work. Remember, you don't highlight your extra enters. I'm going to go now to layout. I'm going to go to columns. I'm going to say more columns. I'm going to select here three columns. I'm going to remove the equal column width. Because remember, instruction six says that column one should be five centimeters. So at the moment, all three columns are equal. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to change column one to five centimeters i'm going to change column two to seven centimeters 
And now can you see that column 3 automatically is like 3.96. If I just click on the little up arrow here, my spacing will adjust automatically. Okay, so you must just go and change column 3 to 5 centimeters. So the only space we have left is 0 0.73 for my spacing between the columns. That's fine. They do not specify here the spacing. They might in the exam. Just keep in mind that the page width are standard and it will fit in. If it doesn't fit in, it, mean, it means you did something wrong. Okay. They do not specify anything here about the line between, but the line between just puts in a line between your columns. Sometimes they want that. Uh, sometimes they don't. Okay. I'm going to remove that. And then I'm just going to, can you see it says here, selected text. So it must be on selected text. And then you just click on OK. Okay. Now it might not look 100%. But we still need to put in our column breaks. Remember this must actually move over to here. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to add under layout a column break. Okay. If this doesn't happen, doesn't move, remember it's because of it being a word art. So you can manually move this down here. Remember it's word art. Eh? They don't always ask word art, but if they do, Remember that you have to manually move wherever you want it. And then the picture. So I'm just going to click here in, in front of the picture. Remember we have a drop shadow here. That's why the insertion point is blinking there. But if if you want, remember we have to put in here a column break. So I'm just going to click here in front of my picture or to the left of my picture. And I'm going to add here another column break. So my picture will move to the right. And then I need to make sure everything is working perfectly. So that thing there, I can just press delete to remove it. There we go. Uh, I have my name here. I have a line open. I have it here. I have a line open. That I can remove. So remove all the unnecessary stuff. Your picture is fine like that. Here we have an extra enter. There we go. Now people, if you click here, anywhere here, can you see there's three columns here? If I click down here, it's one column. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight this and I'm going to move this to the left. There we go. So this is now one column and this is now the three columns. This is something that you need to practice. If you, if this doesn't work out correct, remember undo is your best friend and it's all about practicing. So this is basically instruction seven, which I've done. Um, instruction 8 says change to one column. Keep in mind, I've already done that. If I click here, it's one column. If I click inside this, it becomes three columns. So that's what they mean there. Then, next up they sell, they tell me leave two line spaces and insert a single line, the weight of half a point from the left to the right and margins. I can just basically go there. And I can just go and I can add my little horizontal line again. So remember, they want a line open, eh? Okay. Um, that's basically what they want. They want to see, are you able to add a line before and after and include your three columns? Because this should be one column. Because our, our um, mail merge letter will appear here once we do this. Okay, that's in, now let's go on to instruction number nine. It says here, add the following footer. So I'm going to go to insert, I'm going to go here to footer, and then I'm going to click here on the blank one. Now they tell me 9.1.1, insert a double horizontal line of one and a half points from the left to the right hand margin. Now people, there's no default way to add a double line because they want a double line remember the single line i showed you you go there and you go there the double line there's no such option so what we do we have to manually go and add a border so i'm going to go to my borders i'm going to go to borders and shading i'm going to select here a double border i'm going to change the the width to one and a half points it's a bit thicker then i'm going to 
can you see it's all automatically under box because it's gonna draw a little box here but then you can go oops sorry i'm just gonna change this to paragraph then you then you're gonna go here and just remove that remember that eh? so i'm just gonna cancel here let me just go here and just delete that okay so i'm gonna go there i'm gonna go here i'm gonna click on borders and shading i'm gonna select my double change the width to one and a half points as they want can you see that it applies to the paragraph and then you can just go and you remove the extra ones there because we just want a double line and then you click on ok and then it it includes a double line for us then they tell me to leave two line spaces open again people two line spaces is just a line open and then they want us to insert this as uh, size 10 centered and then we're going to type in here fiber house oops fiber space house comma five montiki road port elizabeth uh, 6100 i'm going to enter and the registration details is 2018 forward slash zero one three five seven nine forward slash zero six comma the vat space four five six seven eight nine zero sorry one zero two three there we go okay and then we've included our footer here we've included our letter head. now we can save this as q5 optics lh i'm just going to go file save or save as click on browse i'm going to save it with my other files so i've saved it under the desktop under sweetie n6 there we go and then the file name i'm going to save it as q5 x l h and i'm going to say save and remember in the exam you need to print this as well eh? okay so once i'm happy with question five i'm going to carry on with question six which is on page 13 so i'm going to open a new blank document so i'm going to go file i'm going to go new blank document there we go now i prefer to use the wizard when we do the mail merge so let's just before we do this let's quickly just read what it says it says here under question 6a use the letterhead to create a primary document to be used as an invoice to the clients of Quaulesa. the data source of the, the the data source file optics data has already saved in the folder computer practice n6 so they actually tell you that the optics data file has been created for you now they don't always do that most of the time they ask you to create the data source so in this case they needed some to to reduce the marks therefore they gave you the file so it says here instruction one retrieve q5 optics lh now people please don't do it please don't go file open to open it rather go to mailings go to start mail merge go to the wizard in step one here we're going to select a letter right eh? later on we'll i'll also show you the label but now letter we click on next now in step two, this is your starting document. Here, you're gonna, instead of using the current document, which is blank, we're gonna go and say, start from an existing document. Then we're gonna click on open. We're gonna go to where we saved our letter eh? Remember now, we want to use that letter So I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna click on open. And what happens? It basically takes my letter from that file and puts it in this document which I'm going to use now. This is the easiest way to do this because it also includes your foot, your header and your footer. So you don't have to go manually go and copy it in. Okay, so instruction one I've done. Instruction two, use Arial size 12 unless otherwise instructed. So remember Arial size 12. I'm just going to change this to 12. And then my margins, I'm going to go layout margins. It's already on narrow. So I'll leave it as is. Then instruction 5 says, use the mail merge function to link 
optics data that is saved in the computer practice slash student files folder to the primary document. In order to do that, I actually need to go to the next step, which is step three. Now here, if you have to create it, you're going to select type a new list. We already have the file, so we're going to say use an existing list. I'm going to click on browse. I need to go now to where the file is located. So I've saved it under desktop, under N6. And I'm going to go here to optics data. Can you see optics data is a database file? So I'm going to click on open. I can double check that all the work is correct. It's there. Looks like the correct one. I'm going to click on OK. And now I can go to my step four, where I physically type in my letter. So instruction six says, leave two line spaces below the letter A and create the three tables according to the proofreading signs as shown on the next page. So people, once I read that, I'm, I normally stop there and then I move to the next page and I type in what they want me to type in. So if, if you look on page 14, I have my letter right here. That's what they want. They want me to leave a line open and then I'm going to type in the tables or create everything exactly as they want. So wireless installation job card, uh, colon, then I want, me, I want to leave a line open. And then I need to create my little table here. So it's two columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight rows. I'm going to go, I've clicked there. I'm going to go insert table, two columns, eight rows. There we go. My column, I'm just going to adjust it a bit. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to type in here in capital letters, customer ID, colon, client name colon on site contact name colon on site contact number space one colon on site contact number two colon and also address colon package details colon and estimated installation time colon so I need to make my column a bit bigger there we go. And then they tell me here that the table headings and column headings is in capital letters bold. So this, I presume, must be bold. There we go. And then I'm going to add my little fields here. So I'm going to click on the first one. I'm going to go to mailings. I'm going to add here customer ID. I'm going to go to the second one. I'm going to add name space and then surname there's always a space between your name and your surname something that they look at when they mark because students get it wrong and then add your contact name add contact number one people this is just the, the quickest way i found to do this uh, then we have street comma space then we have suburb space and then we have city there we go then the package detail is 10 megabit per second max and then the next one there is three hours no capital letters there we go they also say here shading grade 25 percent so the shading will be on the left hand side so i'm going to highlight that I'm going to go to a home. I'm going to go to shading. Click on the little arrow. Or little, and then I'm going to say here the gray hover over 25%. Let's just see that's 15%. That's 25%. There we go. And then the row height. So I'm just going to click anywhere on my table. Go to layout. Can you see there's the row height? So let me just highlight all of this and then change the row height. To 0 0.7 eh? there we go so i've done that now leave a line open then i'm going to type it here package leave a line open now here i have to add my second table which now has four columns 
and five rows. I'm going to go there, insert a table, four columns, five rows. There we go. And then I'm quickly going to just type in here in capital letters, download, speed, upload, speed, the price, the tick. All of this must be aligned to the center. And I want this to be bold. There we go. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to type in there up to 2 megabit per second. Up to 10 megabit per second. Up to 15 megabit per second. Up to 30 megabit per second. There we go. Now, people, instead of typing all of this every time, you can actually just copy it. Go there. this is centered again and then change that one to a one that's a three that's a four and that is a seven so just a bit quicker instead of typing every time looks like all of this appears in the middle i'm just going to change all of this the price here is 4.99 6.99 i'm using my arrows move up and down between my cells just to make it a bit quicker and then they want a tick there okay they actually tell you there the tick is a winding symbol 252 so i can go there insert symbol more symbols winding should be still selected and then you can just go and look for that tick, okay? or you can type in here 252 There we go. You can see it's 252. That's the one they want. Okay. Then we have leave a line open again. And then we type in there stock and equipment. Let's double check your spelling. Easy to make a little mistake. And now we get to our little calculation here. Now, so I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 rows. And four columns. I'm going to go there, insert table. They want four columns. They want, I can only have eight rows, so I can do it this way. And then I can just go here, just click at the last row, and I can just say layout, insert below to add my last column. And then remember something that I didn't do highlight that, change to bold, highlight that, change to bold. And then that one should also be bold. There we go. Okay, so now, and I presume this one, the shading is again 25%. And then here is also 25%, bold, centered. Okay, again, many ways to do it. You must do what works for you. Unit price, space, uh, open the bracket, or when you close the bracket, it's going to do that where it has that reserved word just press backspace again to take it back to the normal one okay. price in here i'm going to type in pole i'm going to type in bracket i'm going to type in cable uh, router and labor quantity as two one fifty one and three the unit price is 350, 450, 16, 2500, and 270. There we go. Now, the prices here we have to calculate. So I'm just going to highlight this, change it to right align. I'm going to change, highlight this. I'm going to change to right align, highlight this, and become center. Now you're asking, what am I going to do here? I'm just first going to highlight and I'm going to merge it. So I'm going to merge everyone individually. So I'm first focusing on getting all my information in. And then I'm just going to remove my little borders. So I'm going to type in here subtotal VAT at 15% and then total payable. 
typo. I'm going to highlight all of that, change it to bold. And now, people, how do I remove my borders? You can do each one individually. So I'm just going to click on the, first, on the last one here, go to borders, go to borders and shading. And then you'll see that we've got a, under my cell, I have the border there. I can just go, remember, I want to remove this one, this one, and that one. I want to keep that one. So I'm just going to go do that. So I'm basically just removing it. The one here, I want to remove that and that one. So again, I just click anywhere in that cell. Again, people, there's more than one way how you do this. Whatever works for you. Here we go. And the next one, again, I want to remove that line there, right? So I'm going to go here, borders and shading. Just change it to cell. Remove that one. That and that one I keep. There we go. Okay, so I just removed my little borders. That is correct. That is correct. I don't see anything that I missed. The footnote, we'll get to the footnote. It's always part of your instructions. It just tells you that the footnote will be there. So once I'm happy, once I've typed everything, I can actually go back to my instructions, which is on page 13. Remember, I stopped on instruction 6. It says leave two line spaces below the letter head and create the three tables auto fit window. If you go, if you click on any of the tables and you go to layout and you go to auto fit, you'll see that window is selected all automatically. So that's the default one. According to the proofreading science and show and sh as shown on the next page, do not key in the instructions and do not exceed the margins. I have not exceeded my margins. As you can see here, it is quite a tight fit as it doesn't allow me there's already a second page. I need to remove that before I merge. Now, instruction seven says insert the field names where indicated with brackets. So I've added my little field names here. Bold the field names. I'm actually just go here and make them bold. Here we go. Use justification, wrapping of text and format exactly as indicated in the table. I've done that. Adjust the column width where necessary. I've done that. Center all the cells vertical. Now, you need to be a little bit careful here. If I go, for instance, this one, I can just go highlight, go to layout, and then can you see we've got nine options here. That is center horizontally, and that is center vertical. So just keep that in mind. They want me to, remember, it's left aligned, but they want me to center it vertical. So if I click on that, it can you see what happened there? Can you see the text moved down a bit? Okay, so I've done that. And I need to do this with all three. People, you cannot really see it here. The reason why we can see it here is because the, our heights are set to 0 0.7. That's what, so basically, when we marked this, we just looked at the first table. But if you want to, you can waste time because that's basically what it is. So if I go here and I highlight that and I change that to that one, you cannot, you cannot see it. Okay, because of the height is, yeah, it doesn't allow you. Okay, so, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to do all of them. Number 11, use shading of 25% of the indicated. I've done that. That's my shading. Uh, there's shading there and there. I've done that. Insert the borders exactly as indicated. Change the weight to one and a half point as indicated on the next page. Um, okay, I need to change my borders to one and a half. So I'm just going to click on a little um, plus sign there. Go to home. Go here. Go to borders and shading. And change that to one and a half. There we go. I actually see that they don't want this to be one and a half. I'm just going to highlight that. I'm going to change this. You see, they love asking stuff that takes time. Uh, let me just cancel that. I'm going to go back there, go to border, change this to a quarter, cell, 
there we go and then i'm just going to say custom here because remember the outside ones we want thicker so i'm gonna the, that one okay so change that to one and a half and then i'm just going to click on it to make that bigger there we go and then i'm going to do the same here highlight this go here go to borders and shading um make sure it's set to the cell or the table and then i'm gonna remove my say custom that should be a smaller one come on sorry here we go and then one and a half points will be that one there we go okay doesn't look right now supposed to be right but people I'm not going to waste a lot of time here with this now um, you can have a look here it's, this one is straightforward you just highlight go there go to borders and shading change that to one and a half points select table click on ok and everything changes can you see I've changed everything I think it might be my my zooming there we go the zooming was the thing it should be 100 percent if you zoom out then it doesn't look that right okay i'm just gonna i'm not gonna bother with uh, the remaining because uh we're running out of time um so i've done number 12 number 13 says use the table formula and calculate the answer where the question mark appears display the answer as currency with two decimals so we need to do the calculation here now people if you're running out of time you can actually just figure this out yourself 2 times 350 gives me 700 so this is now a quick way to do it not recommended but if you're running out of time and you can't on the you can't remember how to do it you can do it like that the correct way to do this is you go to where you want your answer you go to layout then on the right hand side we have a formula button here if you click on formula, you get the screen. Automatically, it picked up that is numbers to the left, and that's why it says sum to the left. If I go and click on OK here, it's basically going to take that value and that value, add it together. We don't want that. We want that value, multiply that value. So I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to go back to my formula, and then here, I'm going to put in the correct formula. Now, this works very similar to Excel. So, I'm just going to say equals. Now, it's column A, column B, column C. This is now row 1, row 2. So, that's, that will be B2 times C2. And they also, they want currency. So, the number format, they love asking the currency one. Then you just click on the little drop down arrow and you select here the last one here which is the rand the currency and the two decimals so that's the one we select and then we click on ok so it basically tells us two times 350 gives me 700 okay unfortunately there's no auto fill as in excel so we have to do each one manually i'm going to go to the next one formula take that away equals and that now becomes B3 times C3, eh? And then I need to change this to that, okay? Now, yeah, I'm gonna, just going to do the remaining ones. Come and go there. So that means 1, 2, 3. It now becomes 4, right? I have to do all of them in order to show you the subtotals. It's going to be B4 times C4. 50 times 16 gives me 800. That's correct. Do the next one. So people, maybe just make a little in your, with your pencil. Just say in your exam paper to make it easier. Just say there B1, B2, B3, uh, B4, uh, B5. So it's going to be B5 times C5. And then the last one is now going to be number 6. B6 times C6. Here we go. 
So 270 times 3 gives me 810. Now the easy one is my subtotal. Subtotal means add the values together, right? They actually say that under 13.1.2, the subtotal is the sum of the price. So that's the prices. I'm going to go there. The moment I click on formula, it picks up that there's values above it. So equal sum above. That's perfect. We can leave it like that. It picks up all those, it adds all those values together. Now, we want to calculate the VAT at 15%. So we have to calculate the VAT of that value. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to formula. I'm going to remove that. Now people, you can now go and say it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But now remember, we merge that. So that whole thing is A, that becomes B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's going to be B7 multiplied by 15%. That's one way of doing it. Or if you cannot remember that B7, you can go, instead of typing in B7, you can type in there the value of 5260. Again, people, it's not recommended. That's why I show you the correct way of doing it like this. But again, people, it's practice. Eh? Now, then the, the total here, so I'm going to go there, go to formula, remove that, equals, and remember that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, B7, and B8. So it's B7 plus B8, which is that value and that value added together to give me the total payable. Okay, so 5260 plus 789 gives me 6049 Rand. That's the total amount payable. And again, it must be right aligned and then they want two decimals. If in the exam they ask you to remove the decimals, to do that straightforward, I'm just going to click on it, go to formula. And then can you see that it says dot zero zero? Just remove that. I'll just show you. There we go. So we, we, rem we keep it like it is. But we're just removing the decimals. Then it appears like that. Okay. I'm just showing you for if they give it to you like that in the exam. Okay. Now instruction number 14 says insert a following footnote after the word price in the second table. The column heading has indicated and use one as a footnote number. So the word price, I'm just going to highlight price. I'm going to go to references. I'm going to say insert a footnote. And then here, I'm going to type in the footnote that I want, which is capital letter per month for a 24 month contract period. There we go. Um, and then they do not, they just say here that they want the number one as a footnote number. If I zoom in a bit, you'll see that it uses an I. No, that is a one. Okay, let me just, I can double check to make sure. I can just go to references, click on the little arrow here, and you can see here it says the number format is a one. Sometimes they want you to use an I, then you can use, select that one, I. Eh? But for now, we are using the correct one. So that's fine by me. So I've done page 13, completed. Page 14, I've completed it. And then they want me to instruction 15 says to save it. So I can actually go file, save, browse. I'm going to save this under my desktop, under the N6 folder, and I'm going to give it the name, as they instruct me, question 6A, optics table, and I'm going to click on save, there we go, and remember to print this as is, eh? because we want to see your fields, people very, sorry, I need to change that to question 6A, don't forget that, eh? very important. People, this instruction, this page is very important, if you look at the mark allocation, Question 6A alone is 38 marks out of 200. So we will look at, did you include your letterhead? Did you type it exactly as appears here? And did you include your field names? So normally we go file print. I'm not going to print this. Also keep in mind it should be on one page. Eh? Oops, it's not fitting on one page. 
So if it doesn't fit, this can happen to you in the exam. Before you print, make sure it fits on one page. If it doesn't, somewhere we wasted some space. So if I cl closely look at this, I can see in my header, and you see there's an extra enter. Let's just click on delete to remove that. I'm making my header a bit smaller. Let's just see if it fits now. Okay, total payable still doesn't fit in. So let's just see somewhere I used an enter where I should not. But people, if this happens to you in the exam and you don't know what to do, maybe just steal an extra enter from your letter head. It's not recommended, but if you do, you see it fits in. So we can just remove this. Uh, let's see if I can find another one. Remember, this is now where we're going to waste time to figure this out. So you can just print this and then, then just remove that extra page. But as you can see, this is a, a little tight fit. Somewhere I have an extra enter which is not supposed to be there. But let's just quickly carry on to the next page, page 15, question 6b. This is now where we have to merge. If you look at this, this only counts six marks. Uh, the mark allocation normally, they, we look. the first thing we look at is that you change your question number in your header. We want that. Then the next thing there is instruction three. We want to ensure that the footnote number stays the same on all the pages. If we merge this and we print it as is, the first page, the footnote number will be a one. The second page will be a number two the third page, number three, and so on and so on. There's something I need to go change in order to have the footnote stay the same on all the pages. I'll show you that now. Now, I also always tell my students under question 6b, instruction one, you actually do last. You first, or almost last, you start with changing my header to question 6b. Here we go. That's the first thing we do. Now we want to ensure that the footnote number stays the same on all the pages. Now people, that's actually straightforward. You're going to go to references. You're going to click on your little arrow here. And then under your numbering, it says continuous. Continuous meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Just change that to restart at each page. It means every page will restart at number 1. Also very important, apply to, we need to change this to the whole document because the whole document needs to be updated and then we click on apply. Okay? On this page, nothing happens, but the moment you complete your merge, you'll see that all the pages stays number one. Now, number four says ensure that the column width are wide enough to fit the merge data without wrapping. So if we go to step five, we can go here we can preview our information and then we can just move through our three little recipients. Uh, we've done that. Number five says to save it and number six says to print the merge documents. So I'm going to go to step six, click on edit individual letters. The problem with what I've done now is every letter will have two pages. So again, people, time is limited in the exam. So instead of wasting time to fix this, rather just print, manually remove the extra pages and only hand in what is required. Do not hand in the whole thing. Remember, three hours. If you think about it, you have a lot of work to do. So if you waste time on stuff like this, you're not going to finish. So I'm just going to go edit individual letters. I'm going to go OK. And then you'll see that it opens a new document with that one is number one. There's still a number one. And there's still a number one. Magically, that extra enter did not affect my page pages. Okay, which is good. So I can save this. Okay. So I hope you're happy with that. Straightforward. And remember, we need to print this as well, right? People, just one thing, something that we see a lot is that students hand this in as question 6a. Remember, this is question 6b. 
6A is where we want to see the fields. If you hand this in 